Okay, frequently asked questions for CFPs, a beginner's guide to conference speaking. A quick introduction, my name is Paula Kennedy. I'm co-founder of a company called Syntasso. We make a framework called Cratix, which is for building platforms on Kubernetes. But what I want to talk about today is CFPs, which feels a bit meta because I submitted to the CFP and here I am. But what's a CFP? CFP stands for Call for Proposal. It's basically a form that you have to fill in with loads of information. It goes to a committee generally of volunteers, they're typically superheroes. They take some time, they have to read thousands of submissions and then they make a decision whether that talk fits or doesn't fit and then they let you know. How do you find one? Classic answer, it depends. It depends on your community. It depends what you're interested in. I tend to spend a lot of time on Twitter, even now. Uh, and so I look at, see what people are talking at. There's CFP land, there's papercall.io. There's lots of different places that you can find where conferences are kind of advertising their CFPs. Local meetups are a good one as well, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more low key. What information will you need? Well. You need to provide a, set, a, a pretty standard set of information, who you are, a quick biography, the talk title, that's the first thing people look for, so try and make it something catchy. The talk abstract has to have just enough detail so that people know what they're gonna be getting. And there's quite often questions about what will the community get from your talk, what will the audience takeaways, that lets the committee know really what the talk is about. And once you've written this information, save it, because you can use it over and over again for all the CFPs that you apply for. What should I talk about? Well, the best talks I've seen are where people talk about something that they're passionate about, something that they care about. It could be something that you've learned. It could be some failure story. Sometimes when things go wrong, those are the best lessons that people are interested to be shared, like to hear about. Um, if you're not sure, but there's an event that you like the look of, you can have a look at past talks and see what other talks have been about. And sometimes organizers will offer to answer questions. And if that's the case, you can contact the organizers and just ask what kind of talks would be the best for that conference. Why me? You might think that whatever the thing is that you want to talk about, everyone's already talked about it before. Right? There's probably thousands and thousands of talks about Kubernetes. But your story is different. No one's got the same experience that you have. No one's been on the same journey as you. And it might be that your story inspires someone else. It might be the one thing that answers a specific question. It might be the one thing that really motivates someone else to get up and tell their story. What if I'm too nervous? Well, everyone gets nervous. I get nervous all of the time. There's lots of advice out there for why, how you can overcome stage fright, how you can practice. Um, like I say, everyone gets nervous. <laughs> What's in it for me? Well, fame, maybe, fortune. Probably not. Uh, making connections. For me, the thing I love about public speaking is really getting to meet new people, getting to share stories, getting to basically think about something that I've learned and share it with other people. And the most motivating thing for me is when someone comes up to me and says, oh, that talk you gave, that really helped me. I love, I love hearing that kind of feedback. What if I'm rejected? Well, I mean, I've been rejected from KubeCon five times. I think. This is my first ever KubeCon that I got accepted, so uh, very exciting. Thank you. But it happens all the time. The thing with being rejected is it's, it's not personal. Sometimes your talk doesn't quite fit. Maybe it's not quite the right story. Maybe it's, you know, the wrong format. You can't take it personally, right? If you get rejected from one place, submit somewhere else. You will find a place that your talk will fit. And if you are lucky you can ask the kind of organizers why you got rejected but be kind because those those people reviewing those submissions they get a lot of submissions so if they do offer to give you feedback take it but don't be upset if they haven't got time to give feedback what if i'm accepted well this is when the panic really starts my general process goes celebration panic then i write the talk then i rewrite the talk quite a few times then i burn the candle at both ends till i'm completely panicked then I give the talk, yay, great celebration. That's how my process normally goes. Any more advice? Well, be brave, submit, what's the worst that could happen, right? If you like this talk, you can scan this code and give me some feedback. And I wanna do a quick shout out. 
I'm one of the co-organisers for Kubernetes Community Days UK, and we opened our CFP yesterday. Amazing coincidence. So if you'd like to submit to that, you can go to our website and submit to our talk. Thank you.